in the house of the Lord. Maybe in this circumstance, in this situation, it will cause us to appreciate Praise the Lord to all the churches and pastors in the AFFI District 1 Council. We greet you in the matchless and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hoping that your year so far has been uh, successful in spite of the uncertainties and difficulties we face so far. On behalf of my wife, Lady Ann Bradshaw, and myself, we'd like to greet you once again in the name of Jesus and wish you peace and grace from God our Father. I would like to have met with you as we had planned before the pandemic, but we still have to wait until things settle down. And I trust that we'll get there. If we stand firm 
in the gospel and move forward looking unto him who is able to keep us I believe we'll get there soon. As we prepare for our spring council and the theme for it is apostolic standing strong in the faith the truth is we'll make it through this time of pandemic time of racial reckoning and in our country division amen if we continue to watch amen and to stand fast and don't waver remain strong we will make it through together sustained by the love of God May that love of God sustain us. May God uphold us and bless us and love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise Lord, everybody. Again, this is Bishop Watkins, and I pray that you are having a wonderful time at this powerful council. Amen. Where the theme is apostolic standing strong in the faith. Isn't the word powerful? The word is powerful. Amen. And this is the time that we need to stand strong. We're being hit on every side with trials and tribulations, pandemics. Everything's going wrong in the world. But guess what? The word of God is still good and still powerful. And I believe if you'll come and continue to be a blessing, amen, with us, join with us in these services, you're going to be blessed and the Lord is going to magnify your strength and you're going to be strong in the faith. Because the Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please him. God bless you. We love you today in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Truly, we give honor to the Spirit of Christ. Another opportunity to gather together in this virtual council. Amen. We thank the Lord for his goodness towards us, his kindness. Amen. We give honor to our diocesan bishop, Bishop Alfonso Gretcher. To our presiding bishop, Bishop Charles Johnson. To our chairman, Bishop This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that God has been good to you and he has kept you in his graces. Amen. Giving us a chance to come together. Hey, it's time to get into the word of God. Grab your family member and come together. Worship the Lord. Let's go through the word of God and be blessed. Amen. We give honor to my wife and to my congregation. Amen. New Foundation Apostolic Ministries. Amen. We ask that you would open your Bibles to Psalms 77. Amen. Starting at verse number one, it reads, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest my eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient time. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. Last verse, thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Again, Father, I thank you. Ask you in Jesus' mighty name, would you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to impart your word. Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Again, we give honor to each and every one in their respective places. Amen. This opportunity that we have come together in this council to be able to share from the word of God. Amen. And so tonight I want to talk to you based out of these scriptures. Verse number 11 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doing. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. I want to talk to you just for a moment from the subject, remembering the grace of God during tough times, remembering the grace of God during tough times. Of course, we are in seriously tough times. Things uh, are really, really bad. I, I must uh, say that when we entered into this time of pandemic, there was no expectation, amen, that things would go on as long as they are. Uh, most of us thought at the most we would get to the summer, amen. The summertime would come, and as they told us, uh, the weather would chase the virus away. Uh, but the others of us have spent diligent time praying, asking the Lord to remove these things, amen, that we are facing. We have, of course, experienced, amen, worldwide calamity, and uh, we have seen uh, hundreds of thousands of people pass into eternity. And it is easy to reach this place, amen, that we can feel discouraged, amen. I wanna tell you, amen, that it is easy to get into a position that you wonder when things are gonna change. When is God going to do something? Amen. And so tonight, or rather today, I want to talk to you, amen, about remembering the grace of God. How, how can I come to this place that I can remember the grace of God? Amen. Uh, psalm 77 is a very important psalm because it is a psalm that is a voice of an individual but he speaks on behalf of a nation. The Psalms can be best called a national lament of pain. Amen. There are times uh, when the feeling is everywhere, when those who are going through, amen, recognize that I am not going through this alone. And I've got to tell you that right now, before I really get into this lesson, that though you may feel like you're alone, you are not alone. Uh, you are not the only one that is feeling pain. You're not the only one that is feeling anguish and loss. Amen. Uh, we are all going through the process. Amen. And we are all in this place that we uh, must reach out and trust God. Uh, it, it is during a worldwide disaster that we find uh, in the words of Genesis, amen, God spoke through Moses to give him some insight in a rough time. I got to tell you, uh, it, it takes insight, amen. It was in Genesis 6 and 8. These words were penned by Moses, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I got to tell you something. You got to be able to find grace. When things are going crazy, you got to be able to remember his grace. You got to know that God is with you in spite of what is going on around you. I got to tell you that uh, because uh, it is going to take grace to carry us through the process. Though we have been almost uh, to the date a year, amen, since all of this has begun. 
it is going to take grace. So what is the biblical definition of grace? In the, in the Western Christian theology, grace is the love and mercy given to us by God because God desires us to have it. Not because we have done anything that we could earn it, amen, but it is really an attribute of God that is manifested in the lives of those that he loves. In the New Testament, the word grace is translated from the Greek word charis. And charis from the Strong's uh, gives us the understanding of being gracious, a manner or an act, literal, figuratively, and spiritually, to reflect a divine influence upon the heart. Amen. It's when we begin to recognize the grace of God. Amen. The reason why we've made it this far is because of the grace of God. It is not by any goodness of our own. It's not because we have been so careful. But God has extended grace to us. Amen. You know, the, the psalmist here is trying to teach us something and bring us into a revelation of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. He poses six questions, six very vital questions that reveal something about when you feel all alone. So let's go through this process and talk about this as we go into it. In verse one, he says, I cried unto God with my voice. He says, even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. I, I, I want to express to you that God hears you. He understands, amen, even though it seems like he is not paying attention, amen. He does hear you, amen. You've got to know that, that the, the ears of the Lord are open unto the cry of the righteous. You've got to be able to recognize that. It says in verse number two, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not my soul Refuse to be comforted. What a place to be in. What a place to feel this anguish, to immediately pray and seek God. Amen. To feel the pain of the experience. And there's nothing that can make you feel better. Amen. We, we must get to the place that we begin to recognize. Amen. When, when you get into those kinds of situations, you must remember the grace of God. The writer says, listen, <laughs> I remembered God and was troubled. And many times we get into this place that when we think of the Lord, uh, we, we wonder, why, why hasn't he done anything? Why haven't things turned around? It, is, it hasn't happened fast enough. Amen. Deliverance hasn't come when I thought it would. I believed. Amen. And I prayed. And I fasted. Come on, somebody. I spoke the word of God over the situation. Amen. I, I, I believe that God would. I believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so in my earning, earnestness, I, I went after God. Amen. But nothing happened. I was troubled. Praise the Lord. He said, I remember and I was troubled because I thought he would have done something already. And then when he didn't move at the pace in which I thought he should, I complained. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, I started complaining. I started talking about all that was bad, all that was wrong. Amen. I complained. And then he said that my spirit was overwhelmed. Amen. I went through emotional highs and lows. I started feeling kind of hopeless and quite possibly depressed. Why did I feel like this? Because I thought something would have happened already. Amen. He says in verse four, and thou holdest mine eyes waking. I, I lost my sleep. My sleep pattern got messed up. Lord have mercy. When, when we don't remember the grace of God in tough times, amen. Amen. It messes us up. We lose our appetite. We, we don't sleep like we used to. He said, I was so troubled that I cannot speak. 
started cutting myself off from people. I started isolating, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that have gained what we call pandemic weight. <laughs> they have found solace in food, praise the Lord. And then he says in verse five, I have considered the days of old and the years of ancient times. I started thinking about all those testimonies that I gave. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. I think about his wonderful grace towards me and his power. Amen. And what he has done, I started thinking about it. <laughs> he said in verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night. Oh, how I love to sing of his goodness. Praise the Lord. He said, and I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. I began to search myself and consider and contemplate and think over and over what could be the problem. Why hasn't God come, amen, to my rescue? I began to contemplate. What have I done that caused me to deserve such a bad lot at this time? Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we got to make sure that we focus in, amen, on the goodness of God. Well, when he gets to verse number seven, he goes to a series of questions. That is six questions that he poses before God. And when you don't remember the grace of God in tough times, these questions will enter into your heart and mind. Number one, will God, will the Lord cast off forever? When will God show up? When will he do something? Will he leave me by myself? Amen. Then number two, will he be favorable no more? Lord have mercy. Will he be favorable? He's been giving me his grace up until now. He's been giving me his grace to carry me through. Amen. Because favor and grace is the same thing. Oh, will he not show me any more grace? He says, number uh, three, is his mercy clean gone forever? Even if I have messed up, will God not be merciful any longer? And then number four, will his promise fail forevermore? He said that he'd never leave me. He said he'd never forsake me. He said he would be with me in the sixth trouble. And when the seventh cometh, no evil would touch me. He told me he would take me through my trials and my tribulations. He told me he would bless me and he would cause me to overcome. He told me, amen, he would be a very present help. And then he didn't do it. And when he didn't do it, I started wonder, will his, wondering, will his promise fail forevermore? Well, he comes down to two more questions. Have God forgotten to be gracious? Lord, have mercy. See, listen, I, I got to tell you something. We got to remember the grace of God. We got to remember. Amen. We got to understand, first of all, we are undeserving of his goodness. Amen. We don't deserve God's kindness. God, amen, is worthy to be praised. Amen. And anything he does for us, amen, anything he does for us is just the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, and his last question was, have he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Hey, I got to tell you something. Sometimes when you are going through, it feels like heaven has closed on you. But I got to tell you, he hasn't, he hasn't closed down heaven. Amen. God has continued to be good. We've got to make sure that we can uh, experience his goodness and know that even when things are not going good, amen, even when circumstances are not the way we want them to be, amen, that God is still good. The psalmist says in Psalms 40 and 5, many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. 
and thy thoughts which are to us ward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than they can be numbered. Listen, the goodness of the Lord in my life reveals to me I cannot add up the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I can't number them. Amen. Even even when things are going rough and things are not together and circumstances are not the way I want them to be, I can not count up or reckon the number of God's goodness to me. The psalmist says in Psalms 34 and 19, many, many, hey, right now we're in the process of facing many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. Many, many, many are the afflictions. You you got to know, listen, I got I to gotta declare this to you. You got to know, amen, the fact that you're going through doesn't mean that God has left you. It doesn't mean that he's given up on you. It doesn't mean that he's cast you off. It doesn't mean that he's not being gracious to you. It doesn't mean that he is not showing mercy to you. It means it is giving you a greater opportunity to appreciate the goodness and the favor of God. And so many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth, E-T-H. He keeps on delivering. Amen. We used to sing a song, he may not come when you want him. <laughs> but he's right on time. He delivereth him out of them all. And the writer in Romans 8, 28 says, and we know, and I want to challenge you to remember the grace of God. And you've got to know that all things work together for good. Now, listen, I want you to think about this and to consider it and contemplate it and work your way through it. Amen. He, it does not say all things feel good. It doesn't say all things look good. Amen. It doesn't say everything you experience is going to be the best. But it does say all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We must get to this place that we can accept readily the goodness of the Lord. And no, I don't understand all of it. Amen. I have taken this personally for myself as a reset, a time to reset and contemplate and strive to get closer to the Lord. Amen. To come up in places. Amen. To become more focused in the mission and the purposes of God. Well, why are you doing that? I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm doing that, because I don't know all of what is going on. Praise the Lord. I don't. But that doesn't mean I don't understand God is still good. It is in times like these that the writer of Proverbs says, trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Sometimes the process by which we go through, amen, the very process can be so difficult. But we have been given an assurance through the word of God that we can trust him. You know, Job said, though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust him. And so we've got to get to this place that we can accept the goodness of the Lord, even in bad circumstances. The writer in Proverbs, or Psalms rather, 16 and 1 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee that I, do I put my trust. Preserve me. I don't know how long this is going to continue, but I'm asking you to preserve me. I don't understand everything that is going on, but I'm asking you to preserve me. I don't understand every in and out of what has transpired. But I do know that you can preserve me. Praise the Lord. The writer here is trying to bring us to a place that we can make a decision about what God is saying. 
And when you have those questions, remember those six questions. Will the Lord cast off forever, number one? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Have God forgotten to be gracious? And have he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Six questions. And many times it is based on our questions that cause us to stand in a place, amen, that we don't trust God. Don't allow your reason or your rationale to cause you to focus on the wrong things. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember his kindness, amen. Remember, amen, that God has been good to you, amen. Remember, as the writer says in Lamentations 3.24, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion faileth not. They are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. The faithfulness of God extends even beyond a pandemic. And so the writer there begins to give us some more clarity in verse number 10. And he said these words, and I said, this is my infirmity, my weakness. He says, I got this weakness here. I'm struggling through this process. Amen. And I got to tell uh, each and every person, amen, that, listen, we all have some weakness somewhere. And we've got to ask God to strengthen us in our weakness, not to allow our weakness to overcome us, to distract us, to blind us, to cause us to give up hope. We cannot allow the weakness, the infirmity to get in the way and cause us to lose focus on the grace of God. He says, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the most high. Now he is talking about a time of favor. The right hand signifies the power of God, the favor of God. And many times when things are going good, when things are favorable, amen, we, we, we are happy, we're excited, amen. But when things go bad, we just want to think about bad stuff. But listen, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you got to just remember, <laughs> just remember Amen. God's goodness towards us. Amen. Remember every opportunity. Listen, I want to say to all the saints, amen, remember those great services we were in. Remember those council services where you had a chance to lift your voice and worship and praise God in the sanctuary with the saints. Remember those opportunities where you could stand up and testify of the goodness of the Lord. Remember those times when you could sing the songs of Zion, amen, in the house of the Lord. And maybe in this circumstance, in this situation, it will cause us to appreciate, amen, appreciate the goodness of the Lord when we get back into the building, when we get a chance to come together again, when we get a chance to testify, when we get a chance to sing our song, when we get a chance to worship, when we get a chance to praise, when we get a chance to run those aisles, we will not take it for granted, amen, but we will worship with all of our hearts and all of our mind and all of our soul. We will praise God with all of our strength. We will not allow anything or anybody to distract us, amen, you know, I, I was thinking just the other day, I said, uh, you know, many times when people go do what they want to do, amen, uh, they, they don't call it pressing, praise the Lord, they just go, amen, they want to go out to eat, they just go, they want to go out and shop, they just go, I've never heard anybody say I had to press my way to my vacation, praise the Lord, <laughs> but you know something? Amen. Maybe when we come back into the house of the Lord, maybe when we get into the sanctuary with the saints, we will appreciate the opportunity to be together and we won't take it as such a pressing anymore. We will be able to appreciate, amen, the goodness of the Lord. So he said, I will remember, I'll remember the days 
of the right hand of the most high. The next verse, he says in verse 12, amen. Verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes it's hard to get saints to testify. He said, what are you talking about? Well, sometimes it's almost like an auction in the church. Will there be another? Can I get another one over here? Another one over here? Another one over here? Because everybody's waiting for somebody else to say something. Well, I guess what? Yeah, guess what's going to happen now? Now when we come together, we'll be able to talk about it a little bit. Amen. Testify. We'll remember Amen. The works of the Lord. He says, surely I will remember thy wonders of old. We used to sing a song when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Hey, the greatest challenge that we are faced with in this time is nothing compared to the wonders of old how God saved your soul, how he delivered you, amen, from your life of sin, amen, how he brought you through many trials, toils, and snares, how God's favor was on you when you were sick, amen, and you didn't feel well, when you had a pressing need and God created an avenue for your need to be taken care of. What am I talking about? Remembering the grace of God in tough times. Amen. It, this is no time to give up. This is no time to throw in the towel. It's no time to backslide. Amen. It's no time to set our attention on the world. Listen, I'll tell you, it's no time to get caught up in uh, all this political stuff that's going and going on in our culture right now. It's not time to get caught up in uh, well, black lives matter, white lives matter, blue lives. It's not time for all of that. It's time to get close to God. It's time to really seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he is near. It's, it's time for us, the church, to recognize if we are in the last of the last of the last of the last of the last days, then the question is, then why is the church hibernating? Amen. I mean, really, you know, everybody is a captive audience now. Now, uh, if somebody doesn't pick up their phone, they can't lie and say, I don't know where it was because <laughs> they can't go everywhere. Praise the Lord. So we, if we have ever had a chance now to share the goodness of the Lord, with one another, with those who don't know the Lord. Amen. We got it now because the world has been slowed down to a pace. Amen. But before we can do that, we must first remember the grace of God for ourselves. We can't be in a place of pity parties. Amen. We can't be in a place where we think, amen, uh, uh, God has clean forgotten us. We must make sure, amen, that we are expressing the favor of the Lord and letting people know that in spite of what is going on, I still have hope. I have hope beyond this pandemic. I have hope beyond COVID. I have hope beyond financial pressure. I have hope beyond the president. I have hope beyond civil disobedience and hope beyond uh, racial discrimination and police brutality. And oh man, I just have hope. I have hope. I, I have hope beyond all of that. Why? Because I hope in God. And hoping in God shows me, amen, that he's going to come and deliver me. He's going to come and bring me through my circumstances. Hey, I want to challenge us. I want to bring us to a place that we can Trust God. The psalmist says in 25 and 20, oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed for I put my trust in thee. Listen, I, I need to trust him. Keep, keep my soul. Amen. Keep my soul. Help, help me, Lord. Keep my soul. Deliver me. Amen. I, I don't want to be ashamed. Amen. I, I want to put my trust in you, Lord. Amen. Psalm 17 and 7 says, show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that sayest by thy right hand, 
Uh, you saved them by your right hand, which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against thee. All these things that we are facing. Listen, we can trust God. We can know that he'll, he'll bring us through. We can trust that he is going to be our deliverer. Amen. We, we've got to know that. Amen. And if we will just know that, then when we experience his grace, when we recognize his grace, when we talk about his grace, amen, we will understand it is not by anything that I have done. It is by, not by any work of righteousness that I have done. Amen. But it's grace that saved me. Remember, the Bible says that Noah in a wicked world, in a world that was polluted, where men were doing so many bad things, that the Lord said, it repented me that I made man. That's what he says in Genesis, the sixth chapter. It repented me, but there was still somebody that found grace. Amen, that found grace. The psalmist says in 31 and 19, oh, how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. If we can just learn to fear the Lord, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we can learn to fear him, if we can learn to trust him, if we can learn to look past everything that we see in front of us. Why? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. And listen, I got to tell you something. Faith is not feelings. I'm going to say that again. Faith is not feelings. Faith is not feelings. Why, why would I say faith is not feelings? Because if you go based on your feelings, man, your faith is going to be wrecked. Amen. You can't go based on your feelings. Your feelings change every day. Uh huh. Your feelings change every day. Sometimes you feel wonderful. Other times you don't. Some days you feel excited. Some days you feel like crying. Some days you want to jump over walls. The other days you want to lay in the bed. You can't go based on your feelings. So when we walk by faith and not by sight, we walk by what God says and not by our senses. So the writer tells us some very important things in, in Psalm 77 and 12. I will meditate also of all thy works and talk of thy doing. So when you start talking about what God has done, I, I start contemplating and meditating and talking about it. I'm, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to think about it. Amen. I'm go just going to keep it in my mind. I'm not going to allow the news. Amen. I'm not going to allow Fox News or CNN News or any of those other uh, media outlets to control me. I'm not going to allow social media. Some of us have spent so much time on social media. Amen. You need to shut that down and get into your word. Amen. That's the greatest news you need to hear. The good news. Praise the Lord. He said, I will meditate also on all thy works and talk of thy doing. Verse 13, he says, thy way. And that's how we're going to make it. Thy way, O God is in the sanctuary that way. If I can just figure out how to do this his way. You know, I've been saying something the whole time of this pandemic, and I said it before this pandemic started, but I'll say it again for the clarity of those who haven't heard it yet, because it's really important for us to understand this. That the pandemic has forced the believer out of the building. Now, now, all of us know that, but listen, the church wasn't commissioned to go ye into all the buildings. The church was called to go into the world. And here's the truth. And some of you may not like this truth, but it is the truth. Amen. Uh, leaving this building caused you to lose your religion. Praise the Lord. You say, well, you may not lost my religion. Amen. Because this building made you feel religious. And now you don't have the advantage and benefit of the building. The real question is, what impact are you making, first of all, in your own home? And then the question is, how does that extend to your family? And then the next question is, how does that extend to your neighbors? 
And how does that extend to your coworkers? And how does that extend to your community? And how does that extend to your county? And how does that extend to your city? Oh, what about your state? Now, now, why would I ask you those questions? Because remember, the church started with 12 preachers, 12 preachers, 12 men that were ordained of God to go into all the world. And their responsibility was to propagate this message and spread it all over the world. 12, that's it. And you know, on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120 that were there that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You say, why are you saying this? And how am I supposed to feel about what you're saying? Because what we must understand that the pandemic has taken us out of the building, but we're still claiming to be saved. And if we're still claiming to be saved and saying that God is with us and saying that we're still here to fulfill the mission of the church, the question is, has the pandemic stopped us from being what we claim to be? Because the truth is, where God is calling us to is out there anyway. Now, this is a great gathering place. We come together, we gather, uh -huh, we fellowship. It's a great fellowship place. Yes, we do that. But the truth is, amen, the truth is, the church has been called into the world. And maybe the reason we're having trouble remembering the grace of God in this tough time is because we took it for granted before this came. I want you to think about that a little bit. Because he says, listen, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? If he is so great, then why has the building restricted us? Why has the loss of the building distracted us? Hmm, that's something to think about. If our God is so great. You know, in Mark, the fifth chapter, there was a man, we talk about him as the demoniac. We love to call him that. It's amazing. We like to call him the demoniac. We don't like to be called by our former lives, but we call him that. <laughs> and the Bible says Jesus cast all the devils out of him. And of course, he cast them into the swine. The man got delivered. And after he got delivered, the Lord uh, was having a conversation with him. And he said, Lord, let bid me to come with you. I want to go with you. And the Lord said, no, don't come with me. He said, go home, tell thy family and thy friends what great things God has done for you. And that man left him. And the Bible says he came back with a crowd. Hey, I want you to think about something for a moment. When you come back to the house, are you going to come back alone? Because guess what? Let me let me hold up this device here. During the pandem pandemic, these devices have gotten a lot of work. They've gotten a lot of text work. Oh, they got a lot of work before, but they got a lot of text work now. They got a lot of FaceTiming. Uh huh. They got a lot of social media connections. The question is, will you come back alone? Because the real issue is this world needs to know about the grace that we have experienced. So he says, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary who is so great a God as our God. And he says in verse 14, our final verse, thou art the God that doest wonders. Can you find a miracle in this pandemic? Can you find the favor of God in this pandemic? Do you have a testimony in this pandemic? Because God is doing wonders. There are many people who are experiencing great blessings while all of this is going on. Many people who are seeing the hand of God. Listen, you may not actively be a part of it, but there are a lot of people all over the world who are being baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost in the pandemic. Because while this pandemic is going on, those people who never thought about eternity are suddenly thinking about it. And the question is, are you talking about the wonders of God? Praise the Lord. The mercy of God, the grace of God. 
Are you giving them an opportunity to experience what you are experiencing? Verse 14, thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. You're showing us, Lord. You're showing us how good you are. You're showing us how kind you are. You're showing us how favorable you are. And while you're doing that, Lord, we are going to trust you. We believe, amen, that in spite of what is going on, that you are still good. So I want to challenge you with these words in my closing. Remembering the grace of God during tough times. How long are we going to go through this pandemic? I don't know. I know people are taking vaccines and uh, they're, you know, there are quite a few people who have done it already. And there are many, many more that need to do it and uh, some who don't want to do it. And, uh, of course, the, the rates are going down now. There are not as many people passing away. Amen. There are more people recovering. Amen. Because the, the communities are becoming saturated with those who are building up proper uh, immune response. But we still don't know how long that's going to be before things change. So what are you trying to say? Well, what I'm really saying is, can you remember the grace of God in spite of it? Well, let me pray again. Father, I thank you. And I love you and I appreciate you. I ask you in Jesus' mighty name that you would bless us, Lord. Help us to remember your grace. We don't deserve it. It is your unmerited favor towards us. Though things may be tough, you are still a great God. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you for tuning in to AFFI District 1's Virtual Council. It's offering time, and there are multiple ways for you to give. First, you can visit the AFFI District 1 website. Click the Donate tab and use the PayPal. We do accept all of these types of cards. Or option number two, open the cash shop on your phone, type in your dollar amount, and send to dollar sign AFFID1. Remember, Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Go ahead, take a few moments to sow into this ministry.